Are we looking good now, dude? So good morning, we're here on the farm. And I noticed when I did my last live video, I had a ton of questions about this plant here behind me. And we grow our fertilizer here on the farm. Everything we do, we follow permaculture methods, agroforestry methods. Um, you know, we use hardly any ir any irrigation other than in the nursery, we use no fertilizer. Um, and this plant is basically our main source of nutrition on the farm. And behind me here, I have what we'd call Mexican sunflower, Bolivian sunflower. There's all these crazy common names for this plant. But the one to really get to know this one by is its Latin name, its botanical name, which is Tithonia diversifolia. And you guys are gonna be looking for this plant after this video, and unfortunately, I have to tell you right now that the, ste the seeds that this plant sets are actually sterile. You would have to get this plant from a cutting or obtain a plant. Um, you know, I've talked to a couple of people about it. You can't just find plants of this one. We are gonna be shipping plants again here soon, so that's kind of exciting. But Tithonia diversifolia is basically like our fertilizer. You can see this just broke off very easily, it makes a beautiful sunflower. Um, typically that sunflower only comes when the plant gets very tall. So right now it's at a sunflower stage. I normally don't let the plants get this tall. We chop them and drop them on a regular basis. I really like to chop and drop them with our, our clumping grasses. So, you know, Mexican sunflower, they say, is pound for pound equal to chicken manure while wet. Obviously here in Florida, within a day, it loses a lot of that moisture, um, but it has a very, very high nitrogen content. Something I can tell you guys is, I've just been contacted recently by a university and they are testing this for a liquid fertilizer to bring into third world countries. They have a patented process. I've sent them two samples. I just heard back with the second sample that they said that this broke down in their biodigester like no material they've ever used before. So I'm getting ready to have those results. I'll probably make another video and show you guys the actual analysis from the plant but this plant is amazing. It grows like a weed. Um, there might be a little bit of a, a bad reputation going around with Mexican sunflower or Tithonia um, just because of the way it lays down when it gets tall. So if you guys look here behind me, you know, this plant's eight to 12 foot tall right now. It's getting kind of lanky. A couple of them have fallen over and we really like to manage them in a way where we can, you know, we get them really quick before they do fall over. Because what can happen is like just looking over here to the left, when these fall down to the ground like this, there is the possibility that it's gonna root and take off again. So people will say that's invasive, you know, we don't want that. We really try to manage these plants in a way before they fall down and hit the ground like that. And I'll tell you right now, I used to cut these back with hand pruners. I used to cut these back with loppers. I've tried all different ways. You can actually just take the machete here, like you see, and it's so soft that the whole top comes off. Now, we like to cut these back to about a foot or two. Like this is literally four or five weeks tops of growth. I'd say about four weeks of growth. You can see the old cuts way down here. And what I'm starting to do now in my management program with these is come through with the small chainsaw. I really like the new small Echo. Um, my favorite chainsaw is probably the 150 still. It's a really light saw. It actually has a really skinny chain. It's great for fruit trees, great for cutting the Mexican sunflowers. The only downside to that is obviously needing gasoline and the noise, but I can cut this entire row, you know, and I'm talking 75 feet that way, 75 feet this way, completely back, you know, maybe 15 clumps of Mexican sunflower. It's gonna give me a, I actually made another video, a thousand pounds of vegan manure. I mean, we completely filled my trailer here behind the golf cart with all of this biomass that comes off of this front row. Typically, the idea would be to chop and drop in place. Now, in these areas around these Mexican sunflowers, my sunshine uh, mimosa, mimosa strigulosa, my perennial peanut, my ground covers have really, really gotten dense and taken off. So I don't need as much biomass in these areas. Yes, I drop a little bit on the loquats. Yes, I drop a little bit on the olives, but we actually take this biomass and haul it to different areas of the farm. Just right here behind you, on this other side, you can see I, I have a large swale. And the swale we've been filling with biomass over the years, and something interesting with the Mexican sunflower I've found, when you chop and drop out in full sun, the cuttings, you know, they don't take, they don't root. But when you do it in the shade, I've tried it on bananas now, I just tried it in the swale here about a year ago, they seem to root really easily. So just be careful when putting them in the shade, you know, we're just taking it as a source of fertilizer because it doesn't grow as well in the shade and bringing it to the shade to feed those bananas or whatever it may be. I think in this case, we were really busy that day. We were just wanted a place to get rid of the material, didn't want to smother out the, you know, the sunshine mimosa. So we just brought it right over here to that swale but the best way to actually start this plant would be from cuttings. So you really wanna get the old woody cuttings. These green ones, 
only seem to root and start when they're actually still hooked to the plant. Um, the best cutting to get would be these ones right here. When the plant gets really woody, it actually starts to make like roots right off of the um, right off of that old woody bark of the tree. Those ones start really easily. Um, you could just you know stick that in some moist soil, and usually within a couple of weeks, they sprout right back out. They grow really fast. Like I said, I mean we're talking you know five weeks of growth here i mean this thing is like eight foot of growth so they, they you know grow super fast and i found a ratio here of maybe like one mexican sunflower and a couple of clumping grasses to every fruit tree i definitely find that you need more of that carbon silica than you do the mexican sunflower just because this produces so much and the grasses don't recover as quickly so let's say we had three you know a vetiver or a Fakahatchee grass, a lemongrass planted around that fruit tree and a big Mexican sunflower. Maybe you cut one grass every time, just depending on which one recovered faster. I'll make another video in the whole chop and drop process for you guys again here soon. So right here behind me, I have a great example of a kind of a, bat, a, a beat up or, you know, Mexican sunflower. And I guess the first thing I should mention is we just had Hurricane Durian kind of threatening Florida. And I got a ton of comments, everybody saying they were worried. And, you know, how do you guys make out? And just so you all know, we really had no problems with Hurricane Durian. We actually got mild rain. We had one day with a little bit of winds. And what those winds did was they kind of spread and opened up this big clump of, you know, Tithonia behind me. And you could see the whole thing's kind of falling over. And this is where you'll start to have that invasive problem, you know. This is where when it starts to lay down, it can re-root, re-sprout, kind of be take over a bigger area. So this is where the plant's kind of gotten a bad reputation. And you can really see my old cuts on this one. You can see how it was opened up here in the center. And, you know, within a couple of seconds, I can, uh, I can take this whole bush down. And since my banana video, if you guys notice, I've got a bigger machete. I've got a couple of different size machetes. Um, and when you're hitting the old, the, you know, the green growth like this, it's very, very easy to cut with the machete. But when you get further down closer to the brown growth, it's a little bit tougher. The whole idea here is, the whole key here is, is organization of material. Organizing material, that's what we're doing in these food forest, agroforestry systems. So, you know, right here I'm holding, I don't know, 10 pounds, 10 pounds of fertilizer, 10 pounds of manure, however you want to look at it, you know. And what I like to do is I'll, I'll fold it up once or twice. I usually won't use this much, but I'll lay it, you know, in a triangle around that fruit tree. You know, this is pure fertilizer. This is one month of growth. One week ago tomorrow, we cut back these Mexican sunflowers and you can see when you cut them back, they really bush out and get lush, all this beautiful green foliage. And you know, that green foliage is super soft. I mean, you know, I'm, I don't even have a sharp machete here. This is um, basically the stock blade that was on it. I haven't sharpened it yet. And you can see it just takes those leaves right off. And you know, and I'll wait until it gets eight, 10 foot again, and I'll chop and drop it again. So grow your own fertilizer. We don't need chemical fertilizers. Um, many plants can be used for building biomass and fertilizer in the garden. Comfrey is another great one. Usually anything that has a lot of dense green materials. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I need to get back to chopping and dropping. I got a ton of work to do today. If you guys enjoyed this, please subscribe to the channel. If you haven't hit that bell, please go ahead and do so. That'll keep you notified whenever we have a new video coming out. And most importantly, pound dirt.